speak to entrepreneurs around the world, I ask a simple question of every audience. How many of you right now have behaviors that you're doing over and over again and you know you need to stop, but for some reason you aren't? And here's what's surprising to some, but not to me. Near 100% of every audience raises their hand. Entrepreneurs are subject to negative loops and spirals in a way that most of the population isn't, and there's a reason. As entrepreneurs, we are completely and totally different than the rest of the world. In fact, I'll let you self-qualify to see what type of person you are. See, I think there's four different types of people in the world. The first one is the caretaker, people that like to take care of other people. When you look at the population of caretakers out there, there's a ton of them. It's clearly the biggest population in the world. And do we need caretakers? Absolutely. We need people who take care of other people, who take care of us when there's something wrong, who are willing to do the work of taking care of people. Now, I want you to see if you're a caretaker. The question to disqualify you as a caretaker is, do you enjoy changing bedpans? <laughs> when I speak to entrepreneurial crowds, most of the time people laugh and absolutely say no. Now here's what's real though. If you're with a caretaker and I've been in the room and you watch them change a bedpan and you ask, hey, did you like changing that bedpan? They'll actually say, Alex, if that needed changing and I was here to be of service, I feel fulfilled. So if you're not a caretaker, let's move on to the second type of person in the world, the communicator. Now communicators love to communicate. They love the act of communication, of transferring information from one place to another. Now the disqualification for a communicator, because a lot of entrepreneurs automatically think they probably are a communicator, is do you enjoy small talk? If you're like me and small talk makes you think, should I fake a heart attack or how do I get out of this situation? Then you're probably not a communicator. If you put two communicators at a water cooler, they'll talk for 45 minutes about a half hour television show. That's probably not you. So let's move on to the third type of person in the world, the coordinator. My code word for coordinators is memorizers and organizers. They love details, they love red tape, they love fine print, they love contracts. Not because there's a deal, but just because there's a contract. The disqualification question for coordinator is, do you enjoy sitting on committees? If your answer, like mine, is no, because you like to be in charge and committees make you think everything's gonna slow down, you're probably not a coordinator. So if you're not a caretaker, not a communicator, and not a coordinator, what are you then? Well, if we look at our evolutionary human tribe and we have the people who take care of people, the people who communicate and carry on oral tradition, and the people who organize and keep things going in the right direction and coordinate, what are we missing? Well, it's pretty simple. We're missing the evolutionary hunters, the people who get up every day, go out and kill something to keep the tribe alive. And the qualification question for evolutionary hunter is a simple one. Can you turn it off? If the answer is no, there's a reason. See, as an evolutionary hunter, you are part of that small percentage of the population that is meant to get up every day, go into the future, create a new reality, and come back to the present and ensure it becomes real. Evolutionary hunters are different than the rest of the world. In fact, we're hardwired different than caretakers, coordinators, and communicators. They live for the present. You take care in the present, you communicate in the present, you coordinate in the present. Evolutionary hunters live in the future. We create the future, we make it happen, and so we are different than the rest of the world, and that is part of the reason we are so subject to negative loops and spirals. Let's look at how it all begins. Someone like us feels a perceived loss of momentum. Well, how does that feel for you and for me? Since we live for momentum, it's who we are. We want to drive forward, make things happen, make, make sure that we're making our greatest contribution. When we feel a perceived loss of momentum, it will cause us to look for something that will give it back. And that perceived loss of momentum will drive us to do something so that we can start to move back in a direction. And that opens a negative loop. Let me show you. We feel a perceived loss of momentum. So because we're in that loss of momentum, we'll go look at some sales letters or we'll go buy something. Maybe we buy a ticket to an event. Perceived loss of, of momentum, we buy a ticket to a motivational event. Well, when we buy that ticket, we step into that future. When we buy that ticket, we get a chemical response from making that decision. Just buying the ticket actually makes us feel like we're creating momentum. And why is it that we're driven to do this? 
When we have a perceived loss of momentum, what does it really mean? It's a survival instinct that's thousands of years old. Because when an evolutionary hunter feels a perceived loss of momentum, what do we feel? The tribe needs food. The tribe's going to, to die if we don't go out and do something. That perceived loss of momentum drives us with everything that we are. So if you felt that, I want you to know it's perfectly normal. It's who we are. It's how we're driven. And when we go buy that ticket for an event to get over that perceived loss of momentum, we get that chemical rush, it actually makes us feel like we are creating progress. But here's what happens. Because buying a ticket to an event, especially a random event, doesn't necessarily guarantee that we're going to create momentum, we go to the event, we get an even bigger chemical reaction. It, it, we feel even better that now we've done something, we've created something, we've moved something forward. So what happens? Let's, let's translate this into evolutionary thinking. The tribe needs food. We've lost momentum. So we go on the hunt. We buy the ticket for the event. We then go to the event. We're now on the hunt. We're in the middle of it. We're making things happen. And now if we're at that event and we don't actually accomplish anything, there's this evolutionary instinct that we have as, evolution, as evolutionary hunters that says, hey, you went on the hunt. What happened? Well, if you are like most people, you go to an event, you experience a lot of energy, a lot of motivation, something else, but maybe not what you really needed. And because a perceived loss of momentum drove you to a decision, you go to that event and that reflexive check on momentum says, did anything happen? And here's what happens. You know if this has happened to you. You buy the ticket for the event, you go to the event, and six months later, you think back and you think, what happened? Why didn't anything happen? Why didn't I create momentum? Why did I not go on the hunt and actually achieve and make a kill? Well, it's because you went to an event where you got a lot of energy, but nothing really happened. You can't find that evolutionary checkbox to tell you that you actually accomplished something. And what happens? We experience that chemical letdown of not actually making something happen. And that drives us into another perceived loss of momentum, that feeling of slowing down. And so we think, I went to the event, everybody else was doing great, everybody else seemed like they were having a great time, I'm sure they accomplished something, and what does that drive us to do? To go right back to another event. And that's a loop that so many entrepreneurs are in today. Buying the ticket, going to the event, trying to create momentum, finding out that they didn't, doing it again, over and over and over again. A few years ago, I shared this concept of loops and spirals in a conference, in a, uh, a class that we had. And when I looked back after writing on a whiteboard and turned to the audience, a friend of mine, Christina, was actually crying. Like not a little bit of crying, but a lot of crying. And I asked her, why are you having such an emotional response? And she said, you've just described my, li my life for the last three years and I had no idea. I've been going to event after event, seminar after seminar, chasing a bigger payoff, chasing a bigger adrenaline rush, going to even bigger, more expensive masterminds and events. She said she spent over $100,000 and it wasn't until that moment having a negative loop and then what happens is as you continue to spend and do more, it turns into a negative spiral in her life. The identification of that pattern broke her out of it and stopped her from going out and aimlessly spending money to try and create momentum, trying to create that hunt, that kill that just wasn't happening. So for you, if you know you have behaviors that you are engaging in over and over again that aren't moving you forward, it's time to ask the question, are you caught in a loop or a spiral? Are you in a place where you're not creating momentum because you're not actually making the decision that will move you forward? Let's go back to the beginning. When you have a perceived loss of momentum, the question to ask is why? Why do you feel that? What is it that you're going to change in your life that will directly affect that perceived loss? Because there's negative loops and spirals that we get into that are infinitely more damaging than a simple event. You're going along all week and you hit Friday and there's a perceived loss of momentum. You're not doing as much, you don't have as much going on. So you go out drinking that night and you go out with friends and that's supposed to create momentum. Well, I don't have to tell you, that loop that opens, the replacing the perceived loss of momentum with drugs or alcohol for people like us can be incredibly destructive. That is a loop that, that not only is physiologically addictive, it's chemically addictive, it's cognitively addictive. So for people like us, when we feel that perceived loss of momentum, the question to ask is, what is going to get it back? Not, what can I possibly do in the world that will move me forward? 
because when we make random decisions to move forward, when we don't know exactly what's going to come out of it, when we don't understand where we're going next, we can put ourselves into behavioral loops and spirals where we get stuck and here's why. We get stuck because this is a survival instinct. You, as an evolutionary hunter, are driven to keep our greater human tribe alive. And when you experience a loss of momentum, you will do anything to get it back. So the way to stay out of loops and spirals is to identify why you feel the way you do. Figure out what's going to correct that and move you forward and get you back into momentum. And when you have a clear outcome, a scoreboard to guide your way, and you understand what you're doing to create success, you'll get out of loops, out of spirals, create momentum, and make your greatest contribution. If you're ready to create momentum, get out of the loops and spirals that you may have in your life, identify all the loops and spirals and move them aside, replace them with behaviors that will create momentum in your life ongoing, then go to MomentumMasterclass.com. We understand the evolutionary hunter, our personality type, better than any organization in the world. MomentumMasterclass.com will give you the keystone habits to create momentum in your life every single day and to actively get out of, then avoid any future loops and spirals. Because when people like us are clear on what we're going and we understand what we need, we can create momentum every single day. Don't let anybody tell you that that state of flow and accomplishment and moving forward and being in momentum is temporary. For people like us, it's where we're supposed to live. And Momentum Masterclass will show you how. Do me a favor, if this video meant something to you, subscribe to my channel, hit the like button below, and make a comment. Let me know what negative loop and spiral you're going to get out of.